Texas Chainsaw Massacre, a game I never thought would exist, is now out and it's getting some pretty good reviews. It's very similar to a few other games in terms of gameplay, but of course, being brand new, tons of people are wondering how to get the best performance out of the game, including you. Congratulations, you found everything you were looking for and more. In this video, I'll show you how to optimize the game for the best possible gameplay experience and of course, should you wish, the highest FPS possible. This video will go super into depth in the in-game options and of course, the configuration file to squeeze even more out of the Unreal Engine, but it won't touch on Windows optimization really at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find a Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides, as well as anything else related to get the best performance out of your PC. Without further ado, let's go ahead and fire up the game itself. There should be very little performance difference between Steam and, of course, the Xbox Game Pass, where this is available free on day one, of course, assuming you're already paying for for the Xbox Game Pass and have a valid subscription, there are very minimal changes between Steam and the Xbox Game Pass version, so the optimization that I'll go through here should cover all platforms on Windows. We'll fire it up here and get to the in-game options. Clicking through the intro sequences, we're on the main menu here. Head across to the options section and we'll start on the video tab. In here, make sure the resolution matches your display or at least is a compatible resolution, otherwise things will look unnecessarily blurry or take too much processing power when you won't see all the pixels anyway. Full screen mode should absolutely be set to full screen for the best possible performance and upscaling we'll go through later on. This uses FS SR, which is AMD FSR, compatible with all graphics cards, to get ourselves way more FPS, but this we'll get to later as we'll raise the FPS first and then get to this to get even more smooth performance out of the game. Scrolling down further, there's brightness calibration, but we'll skip past this, unless you really need it, to the preset section here. You can adjust this based on what kind of PC you have. If you know it's a super low-end PC, start on low, otherwise start on maybe high. As for anti-aliasing, I wouldn't recommend pushing the anti-aliasing all the way down to low as hair looks absolutely terrible, especially if you're looking in third person. But if you really need the extra performance, this is what you can mess with. Then, effects. You can leave this on high. There's not too many of these that should cause massive FPS drops. But if you find that when there's lots of things happening on the screen at once, lowering this is something you can do. If you're looking for absolute performance, you can drop this all the way down to low. Otherwise, if you prefer better quality, leave it on high. Then, foliage. I'd recommend keeping on medium, unless you find it distracting, in which case you can push it up. Having it set to low almost guarantees guarantees that it'll look pretty distracting, so try and keep it away from them unless you absolutely need it to be that low. Then post-processing, you can leave this on medium as well, you shouldn't notice too much of a difference here. As for shadows, as this game is much slower paced than a Twitch shooter for example, you can leave this on high to keep the best visual appearance, you could even crank it up higher though you'll be losing a few FPS, otherwise if you're really looking for higher FPS, drop this to medium. Anything below this gets a bit distracting, but of course, if you need more FPS, push it lower. I'll leave this on high in my case. Then, view distance, we'll skip over textures for now. You should leave this as high, otherwise very high or ultra, if you're on a much more higher powered system. This is more useful to have higher, and of course it should make the game look a bit better. Leaving this on high is probably as low as I would go, otherwise it may get a bit distracting. Then finally, VSync should absolutely be off, unless you're getting screen tearing with the top and the bottom half of your game aren't lining up properly. As for textures, this is where things get really, really important. So the texture setting here shouldn't cost you a huge amount of FPS to have higher on high-end graphics cards. However, having this pushed too high will absolutely tank your FPS as you're fighting over how much VRAM you have in your system. Your graphics card has a set amount of VRAM, such as 4, 6, 8, or 12 gigabytes, sometimes higher for the 4090s and things like that. This is what your option depends on here. If you have a graphics card with around 4 gigabytes of VRAM, set this down to low. 6 gigabytes, medium, 8 gigabytes, high, and anything above 
10 gigabytes, including 10, set this to ultra. You shouldn't notice too much of an FPS difference between these. It completely relies on how much VRAM you have. You can drop this down one option if you find that you're tanking huge amounts of FPS because your VRAM is filling up. For example, a 3080 with 10 or so gigs, you should leave this as ultra, etc. This will be one of the most noticeable options when it comes to actual perceivable quality. As with this much lower, things will look like they're made out of clay rather than actual real life material. Anyways, we'll go ahead and apply the settings with F and we should immediately see a difference in the background here. And with that, we're really done with the in-game optimization, but we can take this even further. For now, I'll close this and exit the game entirely. Here's where things get a little bit more advanced. This game is an Unreal Engine game, meaning that the configuration file allows us to change tons of settings in the in-game engine that a lot of other game engines don't let us change. This is super powerful. Hold start and press R to bring up the run dialog, and inside of here, type in percentage, local app data, percentage, as such. One word, hit enter. Then inside of here, assuming we've launched the game up at least once, you should see a new folder in here called BBQ Game. Inside of Barbecue Game, we have saved and config. Then we'll have one of a few folder choices here. It'll be WinGDK if you're using the Xbox Game Pass to play this game. Otherwise, it might be Windows Client or Windows No Editor. Inside of here, we'll have engine.ini, which we'll need to open up with any text editor, such as Notepad. We have a huge amount of granular control over the graphics engine in this file, and in the description down below, you'll find a link to the Reddit optimized gaming subreddit, where we see fixes for stutter in Unreal Engine 4 and 5. Scrolling down a little bit, we see steps to navigate to this file that we've already found in a bit of an easier fashion. Then all we need to do is copy and paste the following commands at the bottom of the engine INI file, save it, and we can find them here because right down below in this Reddit post, they are formatted incorrectly. Following the link, it takes us across to Textbin, where we can copy all of these here as such. Then we'll need to paste them into the end of the file. So all the way at the end of engine.ini, we'll paste it in as such and hit Control S to save it. Then as this is a general optimization for fixing stuttering in Unreal Engine 4 and 5, we'll need to select DirectX 12 if possible. And if it's on Steam, we can right click, then click on Properties, and in the Launch Options field, we'll paste in the following Force DX12 XGE Shader Compile. Now I have this in the Xbox app through the Xbox Game Pass, so I don't think I can use this, but if you have this in Steam, you can head across to it, right click Properties, and inside of here, under Launch Options, paste in those commands there and close it. Now that we've added these, it should hopefully fix stuttering, if anything. So all we need to do is open the Xbox Game Pass or wherever you have it and fire up the game once more. You should immediately notice an FPS difference, even on the main menu, and it should hopefully be more stable if you were suffering with FPS stutters before this point. That's the great thing about Unreal Engine is that it's so easy to control. Now, if you have this on Steam, you can shift tab and enable the FPS overlay in order to get an FPS counter, unless your monitor has one built in. Otherwise, if you're in the Xbox Game Pass or something like that, you'll need a third party app in order to see what kind of FPS you're getting. In the description down below, you'll find a video guide for that. At the main menu, I'm getting 390 FPS, but what we're interested in is what kind of FPS we get in game. So I'll search for a quick match and we'll begin. Through the intro cutscene, we're getting around 180 to 200 FPS, which is great. It gives a good example of different places in the game. We'll start by moving around, and with the optimized settings on a 3080 Ti, we're getting around 190 FPS underground and 150 upstairs, as you just saw. Moving around, we should hopefully be able to get outside. Otherwise, we'll need to wait until we can spectate. Of course, we're being chased here, so we'll hopefully escape and find a way out. Moving around, a consistent 190 FPS at 2K is pretty good. We'll find a tool and we'll escape the basement to head outside. Heading outside here, we're sitting at a good 150 FPS, which is actually really good. Dropping to 130, but back up to a stable 150. Of course, the game looks great with our optimized settings. It's not too low quality, that's a bit annoying, but it's really, really good actually. Let's go ahead and change some of our settings.
settings. We'll head into the options menu in game, video, and we'll test out the other options here, such as the highest settings for everything being the ultra preset. With this, we drop to around 110 FPS with major frame stuttering, but it seems to be improving. That's probably just because we are changing a few options. At 130 FPS, things are really good. Unfortunately, we didn't get the time to finish what we were doing there, but essentially what you'll do is mess around with the upscaling setting. What it does is it renders your game at a lower resolution and uses AI to upscale it and make it look better. In the process, you not only smooth out anti-aliasing issues like you see here in the hair, but you also greatly improve your FPS as well. You should see an across the board improvement with FPS when we mess around with this option. It's probably one of the most powerful options there, and that's why we left it to last as we'll need to do this in game to see what we need to push on our PC. It's important to have an FPS counter here, otherwise just go for feel. So into the actual game itself, you can see that we're around 150 FPS in this opening cutscene and around a stable 160 when we're sitting here. I'll hit escape, head across to options, video, and we'll make sure to mess around with the upscaling setting, we'll enable it, and we should see FSR. This is using AMD FSR. At the time of recording, there isn't a DLSS option for NVIDIA quite just yet. The image quality set to native means that it renders at 100% native resolution, what we have up here. However, if we drop this down to high, for example, it lowers the in-game resolution. If we apply it, and we should see a drastic increase in FPS. We went from 160 to 200, going back to native and applying you can see we drop back to 168. Going to high, we should go to around 200. Using medium image scaling here, you'll see yet another improvement to 240 in this case. That is a huge number of FPS. Pay attention to the hair and how things look. Medium is probably as low as I would go unless you really need extra performance. Going back to high, you can see there's a few weird things going on in the hair once again because of our anti-aliasing setting. But if we go back to native or disable FSR entirely, you'll see a further FPS drop as we're back to where we were before messing around with upscaling, but you may notice issues with the hair, for example. If we change our anti-aliasing to low instead of anything above low, you'll see what exactly is causing the issue. It's all of these weird dots that are used to render out hair, essentially. That's also why we don't want anti-aliasing on low. If we set it to medium, you should see a huge improvement already. Our FPS went from 160 to 180 simply by changing just the anti-aliasing option. If we hit escape, options, starting from 180 FPS, and we lower the effects from ultra down to the lowest, we go from 180 to 195 FPS, a reasonable increase. From 195, with foliage on ultra down to low, we should see yet another improvement, though while we're underground there is no change. I'll set this back up to ultra and hopefully head outside to mess around with that setting further. Post-processing, from 196 on ultra down to the lowest option, we jump to around 220 FPS. So, a huge improvement with that option. Shadows on Ultra at 225. We'll lower this down to the lowest option, apply, and we're at around 235, which is pretty good. Textures on Ultra, lowering this, you shouldn't see a huge difference, as it really depends on the amount of VRAM you have. We're at 240, and that is practically nothing for a huge cost in visual quality. Here's low, and here's textures on ultra. Quite a big change, and of course, pretty much free if you have the VRAM available. Then scrolling down further from 238 FPS, the view distance, if we drop this to low, you should see barely any improvement. We've gone to 240, but gameplay will be impacted at such a low option. That's why we want to leave this at around medium. So for now, I'll leave everything where it is with the foliage on ultra, and we'll hopefully head outside to see the difference in FPS. FPS. For example, heading out here and upstairs, then outside, we should see an FPS drop as we're suddenly dropped into a bunch of foliage. At 170-ish FPS, 174, let's go ahead and drop the foliage from ultra down to low and see what difference it makes. We're now at a solid 200. That's about a 40 FPS difference, which is pretty huge. But anyways, for the most part, this is a relatively well-optimized game, or at least on modern hardware. Hopefully you found this optimization guide useful. Obviously, the lower you drop settings, the more the game is going to improve in FPS, but of course, the less good it's going to look. It really comes down to what kind of experience you're going for and what kind of performance you need to push in order for things to work properly. For example, everything set to its 
lowest, applying changes. On A3080 Ti, we're at around 230, 240 FPS, but heading up to the highest ultra preset, we're sitting at around 130. But anyways, that's really about it for this quick optimization guide, so hopefully you found this useful. Thank you all for watching, mine's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!